we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Greetings, you're welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the narrow way Christ for all nations. Let us pray. O oh Lord, thank you once again. We bring the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you today. Thank you for being there for us, even for this moment of eye opening. We humbly ask that you speak through me to us, your children. Give us the heart of understanding and the spirit of discernment to be able to navigate through having equipped us with the adequate knowledge and wisdom that we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today's topic, we're talking about strange fires, miracles and deceptions, especially in the church today. There are lots of strange fires that are burning everywhere. It is my prayer that the Lord will open our eyes to see very clearly so that we can be equipped with the amount, the needed amount of knowledge and also the light that we need to enable us to navigate our way through this dark world. In case you have not subscribed, please subscribe to the Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell. I have started a daily devotional. It's video only. I have a lot of things, uh, so it's easier for me to do videos and write. So for now, it's going to be video only. So please subscribe so that you can be a part of this daily devotional. The narrow is Christ for all nations. The messages are short, maximum eight minutes. Uh, they're about eight minutes, but I'll try as much as possible to make them as short as possible. Please, in case you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly subscribe to this channel, Hosanna E. David, and share this message with your friends and your loved ones. And also, please recommend this channel to other people. Please, we appreciate those who are supporting our ministry. And we also encourage those who have not been supporting us to support our ministry so that we can have enough to fund the ministries that we have and also fund our charity organization. And the good Lord, God Almighty will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's go into today's message. The test for today, we have quite a few Bible verses we're going to read. Leviticus chapter 10, verses 1 to 3. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord speak, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come near me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Let me try to, let me throw a little light on this passage. The fire that the sons of Aaron were supposed to use, Nadab and Abihu, supposed to be the fire from the altar of God alone. The fire on the altar doesn't supposed to go off. And it is from that fire that is supposed to put on their censer and burn incense to the Lord. 
But these people brought in strange fire. Fire is actually fire. But the Lord said, the fire before the altar is what you must use. You must not use any other fire. They brought in strange fire. So in today's message, talking about strange fires, miracles and deceptions. I'm talking about this fire I'm talking about today is power. Fire is a source of power. You can use it to heat, you can use it to convert. It produces heat. And heat is one of the things, one of the energies we used to do a lot of things in this world. Today, instead of many people to take fire from the altar of God, they are taking fire from different altars, different places. Unfortunately, majority of Christians don't even care anymore where the fire comes from. They just want miracles. They just, they just want to be free. They just want prosperity. They just want the good things of this life. Forgetting that there are implications. Every altar you service, either through offering, through your worship, in any way you service any altar, there are implications. There are serious spiritual implications. When a witch doctor attends to you, either in a shrine or if he builds a church and operates in a church as a witch doctor and see called the name of Jesus Christ have, have it registered like a church if you benefit anything from there remember nothing from the devil is free you will pay for it there are lots of strange fires burning everywhere. So much strange fires. As a matter of fact, they are no longer hiding it. They don't hide it anymore. But who cares? I, I saw a prophet saying, don't you enjoy magic? People do magic and you entert they entertain you and you like it. But if a pastor does it, you say he has done something big. And you start talking, everybody starts talking. Let's remember the time of Moses, when Moses went before Pharaoh, almost all the miracles he did, the wise men, the magicians, the witch doctors that serve in Pharaoh's palace, and those who serve in his cabinet, those who perform these things and had in his heart by their secret arts they were able to counterfeit many of the miracles until they couldn't bring out gnats until Moses hit the dust and gnats came up everywhere and they said this is the finger of God they were able to turn water into blood. They were able to throw their sticks, their rods on the ground, and all of them they threw on the ground became snakes, became serpents. The only difference was that the serpent of the, the rod of Moses, which is the rod of Aaron, swallowed the magician serpents. We are not denying the existence of powers other than the power of God. There are many, many instances where we see the manifestation of raw power. So, powers alone, miracles, signs and wonders alone cannot determine that someone is a true man of God. As we move on, I'm going to point out some things and how Satan is taking advantage of the ignorance of the children of men. The girl 
that was possessed. In Acts of Apostles chapter 16, that Paul cast the demon out of her. She didn't have the Spirit of God, but she was seeing people's problems. She used to offer some levels of spiritual solutions to people. And the master of this girl used to make money from her. Many girls like this are, the, are some of those we call prophetess. Many of those who are by Jesus in As of Apostle, they are those we call prophets today. Many of them, we call them prophets. Because we are anxious, we want to see the power of God. We live in a time where majority of Christians are lost. They are in pursuit of power. They are in pursuit of signs and wonders. Majority of Christians today have forgotten about holiness, righteousness, living a Christ-like life. We see today the raw move of powers. People using different kinds of strange fire in the church. People falling and some are sorting. And some of them are arranging miracles. I know that there's a lot of fake miracles ongoing. But there are many, many real miracles going on. Real miracles ongoing. Barren people are giving birth to children. People who have, who have issues of blood are having their problems solved instantly. Even blind people are seeing. The miracles are not my problem. But the issue I want us to discuss today is the source of the power. I believe in miracles. Has God ever used me to perform miracles? Yes. The little grace of God upon my life. God has displayed some signs and wonders through my ministry. So I'm not trying to say the power of God in this dispensation cannot perform miracles. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we shouldn't be carried away. Because the very things that are supposed to confirm the word of God when we go out to preach the truth, when we go out to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, the very things are the, are the things Satan is using to deceive the children of this world and the children of the kingdoms. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13, 14, and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Even in the times of Paul, in the time of Paul, there were people who were false apostles. Even in the very time that the apostles existed, they were false apostles. When we had the original apostles selected by Jesus Christ still alive on earth, there were, there were false apostles transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Let me tell you one thing. If you will not study God's word by yourself, Seek the truth by yourself. If you will not live a holy life and have a personal relationship with Christ, if you depend on any man of God, you will end up in hell if God doesn't help you. Because we have a bunch of people who have made up their minds that this hell, we are going to this hellfire. This is your heaven. I have pastored for over 10 years and I know what I'm telling you. This earth is their heaven. 
I know a lot of times God has warned me, I'm the owner of Ego Eye Open Global Outreach. That ministry is my ministry. On that church watch, I talk about false prophets. There were times, there have been times, many times I pick some men of God, false prophets, and I talk about them. And I know how many times the Lord has warned me never to talk about some people. He told me these sets of uh, these sets of prophets, false prophets, are too hardened. They are desperate. They can go to any length. Don't say anything good or bad about them. They're going to come after you. And not just because they're going to come after me, but because of the kind of season I'm living in right now. Many of these people have made up their minds to go to hell. And they want as many as possible to go to the lake of fire with them. I preached some time ago in church. And I said, there shall be fight in hell. There are church members who will gather and beat up their pastors in hell. Unfortunately, it will be too late. You will be in fire. You will be in a liquid fire burning. So, that's too late. It's my prayer that the Lord God Almighty will open the eyes of someone today. There's so much evil going on. Too much evil going on in the body of Christ. And a lot of people do not care. But some of us have resolved that we will speak the truth no matter what happens. Even if we, even if I have the gun on my head, I will still speak the truth. The life we have here is not the real life. The real life is over there, across this world. That's where the real life is. So I'm not going to compromise the truth over here at the expense of the real life. This time we are passing through. We are sojourning through this world. And I'm not ready to compromise my salvation or pleasing my master for anything. Not for anything. Not for money. Not for women. Not for wealth. Not for fame. Not for anything. Not for power. We have to understand the times we live in right now. Everything is turning upside down. Believers, wake up. Wake up. For the devil has transformed himself into the apostles of Jesus Christ in form of false prophets. Verse 14. Second Corinthians 11, 14 and 15. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works his ministers transform as the ministers of righteousness please mark it as the ministers of righteousness. There is this man of God who preaches holiness. Although uh, I saw him in a recent video uh, defending women wearing pants, women wearing trousers. And I never hear him throughout his defense even saying that uh, those of you who are convinced to wear trousers you should dress very dress very decently. I never even heard him say that, even though he spent a lot of money saying it. Personally, I don't believe in women wearing pants. I don't. Unfortunately, many of these ministers they tell you it's not a sin. You can wear skirts and see commit sin. You can wear uh, gowns. And still dress half naked. Many of them just say you dress according to what your spirit leads you. And we, we, we see people going to church, people who are struggling with lust, struggling with pornography, struggling with uh, fornication, uh, sex addiction. They go to church believing that they are going to be healed. They go to church and it's like, Someone turns few 
into their lust, into their problems, and they go home, and it becomes worse. That is the time we are living in. So what I was trying to say, there is this man of God who preaches holiness. The Lord told me that I should stop listening to him. And I stopped. He told me that this man is a dirty wizard. He's a dirty wizard. That I should stop listening to him is just fake. I have seen people. I got so much attracted that got attracted to me because of the level of love I see, their passion for the gospel, the way they preach the truth, the way they, up, the, they uphold holiness. When you go close to them, <laughs> you see another thing inside. You see that they are not good with money. They secretly sleep with women. Oh, they are possessed. <laughs> I said this one recently. Now look at this man. He's a witch. He's a wizard. He planned to kill me some time ago. He attacked me. Now he claims he has repented. What about the witchcraft? He's telling himself. Today he is he's claiming to be a born again Christian. What about that kingdom you still belong to? Many of these people parody themselves as prophets, as apostles. Do you know some of them go to Kovu? Some of them go to the water kingdom. Some of them have spiritual spouses who give them power to do what they're doing. But if they come to you that I'm a witch doctor, you're not gonna pray, you're not gonna patronize them. So the only way to make them acceptable to the society is to transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. Do you think that if Satan walks up to the, to the children of men and say, ha ha ha, I'm Satan, and you see him with black horns, and you see him with uh, black clothes, smelling, do you think anybody is going to follow him? Nobody is going to follow him. But the truth is that Lucifer was the most beautiful of all the angels that we are created. Beauty was in him. Musical instruments were embedded in him. God spent time to build him. Lucifer wasn't an ugly angel. As a matter of fact, many of those Satan uses to collect spams and sex fluids and drain blood from people are very beautiful people. Handsome men. Beautiful ladies. They are not ugly people. Sometimes when we see, uh, when people see old women with wrinkled faces, with uh, their waist bent, they can't walk well, we say, oh, this is a witch. It's never like that. <laughs> I remember this book we read, Sugar Girl. You see the old witch with long, no, witches no longer look like that. In those days when they want to act films and they want to depict who a witch is, for instance, somebody wants to act the position of a witch, they fix eyelashes on the person and then uh, that's the way they dress the person put longness. Today, uh, that's a fashion. That's, that's an acceptable fashion. Many of those you're running after, they connive with your enemies. And they settle out of court. <laughs> uh, they use withdrawal spirit. When you go to them, they, they consult with your enemies. Some of them are powerful. They don't need to consult with your enemies. Because it's just a matter of setting you free. But you are going to pay later. Either you pay instantly or you will pay later. Me, some time ago, I told myself, I'd rather die with my problems than, than run around with my problems and end up in the hand of a false prophet. That's the truth. 
Let's look at Acts of Apostles chapter 16, 16 to 18. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination matters, which brought her masters much money, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Oh, so you think that many of these people will tell you, I want to attend to you by the spirit of soothsaying? They're not going to tell you. But this is a question. If someone can tell you who your problem is by the spirit of God, why can't that spirit of God that sees deep things about people convict them and also convince them that they shouldn't live in adultery and fornication. The Spirit of God is not just Spirit. The Spirit of God is Holy Spirit. And wherever the Spirit, the Holy Spirit lives, must be holy. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. <sighs> when you see some of this prophets you see their wives in fact the the person we call jezebel addressing is nothing to compare to some of these prophetess and prophets and prophetess and um, prophets wives you see them with their long nails with their eyelash with sexy dresses there is this lady that calls herself an apostle. I went through her profile. She couldn't even cover her cleavages. For you to claim if there's anything like a female apostle, which I do not believe. You can be a female and you become an apostle. How? You can be a female apostle. I think before she claims to be an apostle, you should learn how to cover your nakedness well first. You haven't been able to cover your nakedness properly in public. And you have the guts to say you are an apostle. Apostle of prostitution. Apostle of sexual immorality. It's sickening sometimes. I, I, I saw about three days ago, one who calls himself a, a prophet with he plated his head with attachment he can from time to time he keeps splitting his hair with attachment a man not a woman and you see so many jewelries i don't know if it is uh artificial lens or not that his eyes don't actually look natural because he's black person though some black people have that kind of eyes but i don't know and I went over the news, I went to session Google, and I saw that he had some multiple sex videos got leaked. And people still knew before him. In fact, if you go to his page, many of his followers answer his last name. Something is wrong with them. If you go to Facebook, many of it, they call him Jesus in the flesh. Now you know who I'm talking about. He is Jesus in the flesh. <laughs> uh, and he has followers. He has multiple followers. People follow him. Jesus in the flesh. But does that stop people from sowing a thousand dollars into his life? They do that every time. <laughs> Why? Because, listen. These false prophets, they are God's judgment on this generation. Because this generation fails to acknowledge the truth, God gives them up to delusion, to a strong delusion that they be led astray so that they can reap the reward of their evils at the end of their lives if they fail to repent. I know I'm an enemy to a lot of people, those who preach holiness, those who speak the truth, they are enemies to the majority. But 
Why not please the owner of the kingdom and displease the majority with your truth? I'm not going to stand in the presence of any bishop or a bishop or pope on the last day. I'll be standing in the presence of God to give account of how I live my life. The times are evil. The days are rough. It's time to stand for the truth. Because a rapture can take place any time from now. Any moment from now. A few days ago, I saw... Not a few days ago, it's, a, it's about... Uh, it should be about a, two weeks now. I saw a bronze, bronze trumpet. Big bronze trumpet. The trumpet, that trumpet could sound any moment. And those who are left behind will pay for their disobedience and lukewarmness. Let's go back to the Bible verse. Acts 16, 16 to 18. Verse 17. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God. We show sure unto us the way of salvation. That means even this girl that has an evil spirit acknowledge the most high God and acknowledge the truth. This is exactly what these false prophets and fake men of God do. 18. And she did this many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. This is a problem. Many people who have evil spirits don't want to let the evil spirits go. Rather, they want to use the evil spirits to work for God. And they are doing just that. Let me say this, and I'm not going to apologize for saying it, and I'm not going to change this truth because it is a final conclusion. Most prophets and prophetesses of these generations are possessed. I'm telling you the truth that I know. Most ones I have met, most ones I've prayed about are possessed. Possessed. How can you, who have multiple demons in you, be casting out demons from other people? Some of these deliverance we watch on TV are actually manipulations. The spirits don't go. They bind the spirits and push these people into the kingdom more. I've seen a lady who went to Lagos some years ago. She went for deliverance. By the time she came back, she stopped seeking deliverance. Not because the spirit left her, but because she was initiated the more. In TB Joshua's church. For me to be specific. Because there are people who want to die. This is someone I told. I accused her. Why am I seeing serpents around you? She said, I've been delivered. I said, no. Who conducted deliverance for you? Okay, you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. She refused to say it. We spent time. I said, Say, Lord Jesus. This was a Christian in quotes who used to receive Holy Communion as a confirmed member of the Anglican Communion. She couldn't say it. Finally, she opened up to me after pressing so hard. She said she went to Lagos for seek for deliverance and they pushed her inside the mall. This is what is happening in many of these churches. They don't conduct deliverance for you. Satan does not cast out Satan. But by their secret acts, they could manipulate the demons or manipulate the person to scream at. Some of us don't even know that many of what we see is actually bewitchment. Not deliverance, not the power of God. Some use Kudalini spirit. Some of them Use hypnosis. 
They hypnotize the people. Anything they tell you, you say, yes, yes, Papa, yes, Papa. That's true, that's true. By the time you leave there, your senses return back to you. And you know, but who will believe you? You are a record. Even when people see many of these false prophets who womanize openly, there is one apostle, let me call his name, Apostle Shibuzo, the founder of OPM. OPM. You see his signboards, churches everywhere. God is here. God is here. Omega Power Ministry. There is a lady, a young lady, he took advantage of. Videos are online. A lady who had nobody. She was either 18 or 19 years old. He started sleeping with her. I am not accusing him. There is a baby that came out of that relationship. We confirm DNA tests. The church covered it up and they tried to bribe the girl with some millions. But are people not still going to his church? If you are a man of God, you fall into adultery, you owe your members confession, public repentance, because you are accountable not just to God, but to the sheep you pastor. Uh, this uh, man of God who died, was it last year or two years ago? I think he died last year. Sonny Obosu. Sonny Obosu. He committed adultery, went for ministration abroad, committed adultery, and the lady became pregnant, and the lady decided to come online. And then uh, Sonny Obosu came out and said, well, I'm sorry for what I did. Uh, I have repented. Um, I don't supposed to do that. Look at how these false prophets attacked him. You owe nobody apology. It is between you and God. You owe nobody any apology. You are not the first to commit adultery. Do you know that this man deleted his apology? He retracted it and made another post. To counter everything he said. <laughs> I think a year later he died. Is he going to stand before these prophets that attacked him? No. He's going to stand before God. If you're listening to me and you are already on the wrong path, being led astray, retrace your steps. If there's anyone in your life who does not tell you the truth and the claim to represent God, stay away. Stay away. If not, they will lead you into the fire of hell. Let's look at Matthew 16, 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. This is an interesting record here. When Jesus Christ sent the apostles out, he sent them out and empowered them. To go and perform signs and wonders. And they did us that. So these signs and wonders and miracles, he said, will follow them. These signs confirm the word. Confirm the word. So miracles, signs and wonders. These are parts of the evidence that these people are genuinely sent by Jesus Christ. Yes. And Jesus Christ even said that we shall do greater works than the one he has done. Me, John 14, 11 and 12. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake. So those Jesus was talking to trying to convince them he said okay if you don't believe that i am in the father and the father is in me okay look at the signs and wonders i'm doing just for the sake of this work believe let's move on 12 very verily i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i do shall he do also 
and greater works than these shall he do, because I, I go unto my Father. So we have the assurance that believers are capable, are empowered to perform miracles, signs and wonders, even more than the words Jesus Christ did. This is exactly what the disciples did. I know where I'm going to, just follow me. John 3, 2. Look at what Nicodemus said. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. That's very nice. John 9, 16, 33. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not a Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. If this man were not of God, he could not do nothing. Now, Nicodemus came to Jesus Christ by night and said, I am convinced that you are from God because nobody can do all these things except he's from, G he's from God. And the, the, the many of these people too, in the time of Jesus, some disbelieved and some said no. We believe this man because no ordinary human being can do these things. This man definitely is from God. A sinner cannot do these things. But you know what? Satan and his false apostles transformed into angel of light. And they perform these same miracles. These same miracles. Let's look at Revelation 13, 11 to 14. And I beheld another beast come up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. You know what a lamb represents? Not a tiger, but a lamb. Harmless, innocent, godly. And he spake as a dragon. A dragon, the devil, the ancient serpent, the red dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wounds, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. By the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wounds. Which had the wound by a sword and did leave. So Satan knows that Jesus Christ said, if you don't believe, just believe for the sake of the works I do. And Satan said, okay, this is a great trick. So since you said people should believe your apostles, people should believe those who preach. Since you said you're gonna confirm the word they preach, through signs and wonders, I have to send my people into their midst too, and he empowered them with power. I want to tell you something. Many of these false prophets are really, really powerful. I mean, they are so powerful. Very, very powerful. I know what I'm telling you. They are powerful. Very, very powerful. They are, many of them are high-ranking Satanists. Some of them you see belong to different secret societies. 
let me tell you one truth. I'm not going to expand shit on it. I'm not going to go deep. I know why. If you look at the ladder, a lot of those who are the top, I mean, top ministers, a lot of those, I'm not saying everyone, don't quote me wrong, don't get me wrong. A lot of those who are the top, who call themselves prophets, many of them act like a cult. They have turned it to a cult. <laughs> they fight for each other. They protect their own interests. They fake miracles. They use evil powers. But they care nothing about the souls of men. So why should a minister of God exist if he cares nothing about the souls of men? Matthew 24, 24, Jesus Christ said that false prophets and false pastors shall arise and they shall perform, they will perform great signs and wonders. And by the reason of those great signs and wonders, they will lead many people astray. Have you been led astray? Are you among those who are already lost? Are you among those who don't live a holy life, who are very, very religious, but they don't mind doing any kind of evil thing. Very, very religious. But if there is any evil thing at all, they are the ones that must do it. They don't care. Are you among those set of people who claim to be Christians? I tell you the truth. The fire of hell is waiting for you. If you go to church and you don't live a holy life, the fire of hell is screaming waiting for you. If you do not change, the fire of hell is waiting for you. I have no power to push you inside. I'm only telling you the danger ahead. There is a lot of deception. If Satan could operate in heaven and deceived one third out of every angel of God, he deceived one third of the angels of God and he used his tail to wipe one third of the stars of heaven, the angels of God, cast them to the earth. If he could succeed in the heaven where God dwells, I tell you the truth, do not underestimate him. I know many of you don't care anything about your soul, but that is ignorant. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes. And for those of you who may be listening to this video, those of you who by chance or by divine arrangement listening to this video, if you are among those who sponsor and empower these false prophets, these enemies of the kingdom, you have no reward from God. You have already received your reward. Rather, some of you are going to be punished severely for empowering bandits who fight against the kingdom of God, who suppress the truth, who destroy holiness, who perform fake signs and wonders, who perform demonically inspired miracles to counterfeit the power of God in order to convince people that you do not need to live a holy life in order to convince people to remain in sin and destroy the truth of the gospel. You will be punished for that. But I pray for you that the mercy of God will be available for you to pull you out of that destruction. Let us pray. The Lord will put our trust in you. We know that you are alive. And that you will lead those, you have written their names in the book of life, you will lead them aright. And you will never let them go astray and, then, and end up in hell. Lord, please help us your children. Give us a spirit of discernment 
so that we can be able to discern falsehood in the name of Jesus Christ. Those whose eyes have been blinded, those who think they are serving you, not knowing that they have been bewitched. Like the foolish Galatians, who oh, were bewitched, and Paul said, who oh, have bewitched you? That you no longer obey the truth. Some of those who are so zealous think they are serving God, but they don't know that they have been hypnotized to serve a witch doctor. But to them, they are serving the man of God. They are rendering services for the kingdom of God. Lord, I pray that let those yokes be broken today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for as many who have one problem or the other. Father, please help them. Those whose heavens have been locked, those whose heavens have been closed, whose atmospheres have been closed, Lord, let there be a divine opening right now. Let there be a divine intervention in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your word we've heard today. Pray for as many who have been supporting this ministry and our charity organization. Father, please support them in the name of Jesus. Release your power upon their lives. May the Lord heal your finances, heal your body, heal your relationships, heal your family, heal your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. It's my prayer that the good Lord will bless us richly in Jesus' name. Please subscribe to this channel, Rosanna E.E. David, and also turn on the notification bell so that when we post a video, you can receive updates. Please recommend this ministry to other people. And we also encourage you to support our ministry financially and also support our charity organization, Rosanna David Foundation, so that we can reach out to those in need. We have projects that are running right now. We have uh, computer training projects we are doing video video editing for free everything is for free uh, graphic design we're doing for free and we most importantly we have physical rehabilitation program and we are doing a GoFundMe uh, that we launched please help us support us so that we can reach out to those people we are uh, attending to right now and the good lord will bless us all richly in jesus name thank you and god bless you see you next time bye, -bye. we hope you were blessed by this message for more information visit our website www.hosannadavid.com email us at info at hosannadavid.com god bless you